Obstructive sleep apnea is a breathing disorder characterised by recurrent episodes of airway obstruction during sleep, leading to periods where breathing stops, known as apnea. Moving from wakefulness to sleep causes relaxation of muscle tone, including the muscles of the upper airway. This allows the soft palate and the tongue to relax and to create an obstruction that reduces the patency of the respiratory tract. Rapid eye movement or REM sleep in particular is known to feature this reduction in muscle tone, but it can happen throughout the sleep cycle. There is snoring when some air still enters, but as the obstruction progresses, the airflow can be severely reduced, causing apnea. The reduction in the ventilation of the lungs causes a reduction in blood oxygen levels, and as a result, there is an interruption in sleep, known as neurological arousal, where the body partially awakens in order to restore muscle tone, and therefore oxygenation. But this isn't necessarily perceived by the person. Partial collapses with reduced oxygen saturations or arousals are termed hypoapneas, while apnea is defined as over a 90% airflow obstruction lasting 10 seconds or longer. A cycle is therefore generated alternating between periods of deeper sleep and higher wakefulness where the typical sleep cycle is interrupted, which ultimately disrupts the quality of sleep and can cause sleep deprivation. Risk factors are thought to be obesity as it increases the amount of soft tissue around the airway but people of normal body mass indexes also suffer the condition, possibly due to increased muscle mass. This may also be why males are more commonly affected, but after 50 years of age, the number of females developing obstructive sleep apnea is the same as males. Smoking can cause inflammation and fluid retention, thereby narrowing the airway, and sleeping supine, meaning on the back, is also thought to contribute. Other factors include long-term snoring, as this is thought to injure the nerves in the upper airway, increasing age, drugs and alcohol, as they can be sedating and contribute to the reduced muscle tone. Craniofacial syndromes, including Down syndrome, and some neurological disorders can also cause it. In children, it can be caused by obesity, but it is more commonly caused by larger tonsils. Loud snoring is the most common symptom, usually referred by the partner of the patient. However, there can be daytime symptoms too, which is then called obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. 30% of adults experience excessive daytime somnolence, where they may fall asleep for short periods of time, even during conversations. Other symptoms include headache, poor concentration, irritability, and even anxiety and depression. A combination of these may also explain the dramatically increased rates of road traffic collisions. In children, obstructive sleep apnea can actually manifest as hyperactivity, leading to an incorrect diagnosis such as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and the interrupted sleep can impair growth. This is most commonly the case in children with excess lymphoid tissue, but in cases caused by obesity, there's often a presentation similar to adults. There's also an increased cardiovascular risk due to the link to metabolic syndrome, which is well documented, including hypertension, particularly because obstructive sleep apnea can increase sympathetic activity, and differently to essential hypertension, the blood pressure doesn't lower during sleep. Hyperlipidemia and insulin resistance are also linked, and it is also thought that as a result of the hypoxia, that there is an increased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. The Stop Bang Questionnaire is a commonly used tool, with eight questions giving one point each, and scores of five or above indicating a high risk of moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea. The diagnosis itself is made on the basis of recurrent episodes of apnea or hypoapnea with nighttime in laboratory level 1 polysomnography as the gold standard, which includes an electroencephalogram, 
and pulse oximetry. From this study, the number of apnea and hypoapneas are considered with the apnea hypoapnea index and the respiratory disturbance index considers these and the respiratory effort related arousals with totals of more than 15 per hour considered diagnostic or more than five with signs and symptoms such as daytime sleepiness and waking up gasping and choking. Because the person themselves are often unaware, it tends to be the partners that first comment on the snoring and this is also considered in the diagnosis. The apnea hypoapnea index is used alongside the Epworth sleepiness scale to help gauge severity. Lifestyle modification is a crucial part of the treatment, including weight loss, cessation of smoking, exercise, and avoiding alcohol and medications like benzodiazepines, opiates, and sedating antidepressants. Continuous positive airway pressure is the primary treatment option and is commonly used, which involves wearing a mask to bed that generates pressure in the airway that helps keep it patent. However, up to 50% of patients stop using their devices within one year. Sleep adjustments can include sleeping at a slight incline and avoiding sleeping supine, and mouth appliances, called mandibular advancement devices, are also options. It's also important to note that people with obstructive sleep apnea that pose a high risk with daytime somnolence, for example pilots, should also be advised to seek advice from their driving regulators. Sometimes surgery is an option, for example tonsillectomy in children with large tonsils, and uvulopalatopharyngoplasty, where tissue in the upper airway is remodelled. More recently, neurostimulation was introduced, specifically of the hypoglossal nerve, to help increase the muscle tone of the posterior tongue and help prevent collapse during deep sleep. There is currently little evidence to support the use of medication.